The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the smart screen system for Mach 3. This will be the first in a series of videos, so I will not try to explain the entire application in this one video. I want to keep them short and to the point. The first thing I need to say is that the smart screen system for Mach 3 is not just another screen set. In addition to the screen set, there is a complete application that was developed outside of Mach 3 called the Smart Screen Utilities. This allowed us to create all of the functionality that we wanted to create outside of Mach 3 and then we're able to link that to Mach 3 without using any of the plug-in architecture that Mach 3 provides. Why did we do that? So we can move it to other environments like Mach 4 and other CNC type applications. I will cover the smart screen utility in a later video. Right now I want to introduce you to the interface. So let's get started. The left hand side of the screen here, the top part of the screen, and the bottom part of the screen, including the message areas, are always present no matter what screen you're on. The other thing you'll notice about the interface is that some buttons are highlighted and some buttons are not. You'll see that throughout the interface. What that's telling you, that's part of the smart in smart screen, that's telling you that these buttons are available. If you try to maneuver to an area where you have to click on another button first, the smart screen system is going to tell you. In this case, you have to hit the reset button. Once you hit the reset button, all the buttons that are enabled are now highlighted. So you can navigate freely through the application. At first, that might seem like a small thing, but it's not. In Mach 3, you can basically click on any button at any time, regardless of what's happening with your machine or with your program. That's where three things come together to tell you what's happening. The button highlighting shows you what's available and what's not available. The indicators in the lower right hand corner tell you if the system is busy, either the smart system or the mock system. And when you click on a button where something's happening, you get a little indicator. It tells you that something's happening, but it also stops you from clicking on other things in Mach 3 while it's busy. Let's move on to the layout. As we said, the center portion of the screen changes based on what screen you're on. The right hand portion will change based on if a toolpath display is required or not. And I'll, I'll show you as I go through it. As in the, the run screen, you get a context sensitive screen. And some people have asked, why did we use a spreadsheet style layout here? Two things. It allows us to organize the information in, in, in a fashion that's familiar to most people. It also allows us to help you when we're talking about buttons and displays. We can tell you that the display or the DRO is in section B16. So we don't have to guess and you don't have to guess. We utilize that throughout the interface. So we provide a consistent easy to understand interface, regardless, again, of what screen you're on. You'll find that the tool screen, the offset screen, and the location screen are very different. We chose, again, the spreadsheet style layout because it allows us to organize the information in a way that's familiar to people, but we also allow you to try to explain some of the more difficult areas of Mach 3 like work offsets. But the best part is you can see them all here. They're easy to see, easy to use. You can change your work offset very simply just by clicking on the buttons or you can switch to machine offsets. You can see your current position based on the machine coordinates 
or the work offset coordinates. Earlier I said you can access the first seven work offsets easily, but actually there's more. You can find an extended work offset. I'll use 250 in this case, and I'll select it. So now I've set the work offset to GP, I'm sorry, G59 P250. So I'm at this location. I can copy the coordinates and save them. And now when I go check, those are stored in my work offset table. Just the way I did it with the first seven offsets. This is a powerful tool, the work offsets, and we're trying to make it easy to understand. Most of the blog postings that we read had to do with people having issues with work offsets. So we spent a lot of time trying to make that simple. Let's move to locations. If you notice, locations is almost identical. But what are these locations? These locations are locations that you can create that you use on a regular basis, like material loading, program start, tool change, park position, some user-defined positions. And when you are setting up your machine, those are available to you. So you can quickly go to the material, the machine load position, the program start position, just by clicking on the button. Again, you move to the position you want, copy the location, but if you notice, there's something additional here. You can say that that location is relative to the current work offset or to the machine coordinates locations. When you save them, it will save that sp specific information for this location. And I'll, I'll show you. So if I have my offset set at G55, but I want to go to this location, the first thing it's going to do is switch to the appropriate offset. You saw it switch and now move back, and then it will move to that location. If it's based on machine coordinates, let me move off a different location so that I get a little bit of travel before it returns. So now let's save this. And I'll set a work offset. I'll set it to G56 this time. So when I hit go to, watch the machine coordinates button. So it will automatically switch to machine coordinates. It will move you to that location based on machine coordinates. And then it will return you to your previous work offset. Mach 3 and consequently Mach 4 are very powerful programs. We're just trying to make them easier to use. The diagnostic screen is more conventional from what you might see in some of the other Mach 3 screen sets. But again, we use the spreadsheet style interface to lay everything out, make it easy to read, and we group things by whether they're access related, input related, output related. If you have a parallel port, you can use that to diagnose what's going on, some of the more advanced features of Mach 3. The settings screen is going to look different than some of the others you may have seen. That's because we've got different functionality, functionality that does not exist in Mach 3, such as the expansion relays and the smart Wi-Fi relays. We also ask you to tell us a little bit about your system, whether it's a plasma with an engraver, a router, a mill, a laser, a 3D printer, or a water jet. Also, homing is very different because we allow you to use the standard Mach 3 interface that's going to tell you we're going to bypass all of the smart features of the application if you choose to use that. But some people like it, so they're going to use the regular Mach 3 homing interface. If you've got your own user interface, you know, that you've created for homing your machine, you can drop that right in and we'll use that. And we tell you how to do it here. If you have any problems, you can reach out to tech support. If you don't have any homing on your machine, you can use a triple edge finder to home your machine. We've created a special interface that allows you to use the triple edge finder to home your machine. 
and it goes step by step telling you how to set it up. It's based on the YouTube video for the Triple Edge Finder. So you'll be able to relate our application to that video pretty directly. You basically set up the plate thickness, check your connection twice, and then jog the, the cutter over the area shown here on the Triple Edge Finder and hit the setup button. The next thing it'll do is find the top of the, of the Triple Edge Finder, move over, find the hole, set the the cutter at the very end of your material and you're done we plan to devote an entire video to homing with the triple edge finder or probing for that matter the routine we like the most is the smart homing system this is where all of the information that you see here is applied you tell us where you have limit switches how many axes you have three four five based on the limits that you have you could have some without some with it doesn't really matter you just tell us what's there and then you tell us which order you want to home zxy or zyx you tell us where your limit switches are located and we attempt to figure that out if you noticed when i switched to this to the smart system it placed my homing switch at the lower position. That's because I'm set up for a plasma. But if I was set up for a router or a mill, it would select the upper, but I can change that here if I so choose. In some cases, you might have both homing switches, and I'll explain that too, because we're gonna d dedicate an entire video to smart homing, or you can just use the safe Z if you like. We're going to cover the smart homing in detail with video of the machine so you can see what's actually happening. But for now, let me give you just a quick overview. The smart homing system has a clear, concise display. It shows you all the accesses, what access is currently being homed. It tells you what the system is actually doing. In this case, it's moving up to a safe position at 100 thousandths per move and that homing negative is active. In other words, you've configured your system to home negative. In this case, safe Z is disabled, and it tells you what method it's using and how you've configured the axes. Your three axis with both upper and lower home switches in the Z position. I'm gonna stop this for a second. And you saw that flashing pay attention indicator. That will appear when, based on your configuration, we feel the situation may require your utmost attention. The About screen is more than a place to go to find out who wrote the software. We've put useful information here, like if you need support and you click on the link, you don't just get an email opened. The information inside your system will be interrogated by the smart screen system and it will tell us how your system is configured. This way, if you're having an issue, we'll be able to see what's configured in your system, how you've set it up, and then we can, we can better help you with a problem. All you do is hit the send button, and that's it. For this portion, I had to switch to full screen mode because when I click on these links, like helpful videos, it actually opens up a browser window and it connects to our YouTube channel and shows you the videos that are available about smart screens and some other related stuff that you might find interesting. Right now, there's only the one. This is the early version that we did, but the new version will replace it and all the other videos as we record them will show up here. We are developers, but we're not just developers. We use this too every day in our shop. You can see the type of work that we've done with the system and how well it works. This was a system that we did for a client based on a 3D model. We turned this pile of wood into a 300 pound, three dimensional model of the client appearing as a superhero. So we understand what you guys need because we use this every single day.
So download it. Try it out. Let us know what you think. And look for some more videos on this channel.